Hello people, are you one of those creatives that has what they call creative block? You want to make images but you're wondering how can I make them like super powerful with strong visual impact and yet telling a good story? Well, this video is for you. So I got a call from one of Nigeria's top actors, Shafi Bello. She said, Kelechi, I would like you to do a photo shoot for me for my birthday. I thought, awesome. Here is a very talented actress. Let's take photos that speak volumes of your talent and who you are. So we decided to make images that sort of tell the story of her journey in life. So the theme of the shoot was, you know, travel. So we said, okay, I mean, she's been around for a while. Can we go retro? So we decided to do a train travel, one and two, even car travel, but retro, like going back to the fifties. So there was a location with an old steam train and there was an old car. So we wanted to use travel as a metaphor, you know, for her journey in life. So the first thing that we need to consider when we are making an image is a balance between contrast and harmony. Contrast is when things are different from each other. Harmony is when things are similar. So the harmony sort of brings your picture together, you know, harmonizes it, keeps it together. The contrast then is the high note, the high point is what makes you see something. It is the thing that is in contrast that then attracts attention. The things that are in harmony are beautiful in terms of the way they come together and they blend together. So it, it's like listening to music, you know, the background beat, you know, the the dum 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 dum. Now it is the voice of the singer and the crescendo that would take contrasts with that calm sound, the rhythm that keeps your music together. For visual arts, for photography, I'm looking at contrast of color, contrast of shape, contrast of light and dark, that is shade. Now let us look at all these types of contrast. First and foremost, we are trying to do a shoot that involves a major character. It's actually a portrait session. You have a focal point. A focal point is the subject of the shoot, the individual that you want to talk about. But we're not just shooting her head. We are shooting her within a space to create a context. Therefore, that is what will then give us the story. So it is putting her in a context that then brings the story. Now, how do you bring attention to your focal point? That is where the balance between contrast and harmony becomes very important. First and foremost, we let's look at contrast in terms of light and dark. Now, a picture has to have a certain balance. Is it a high key image or is it a low key image? High key is an image that is predominantly occupied by lighter values. You know, let's say a picture of people out in the snow, you know, everywhere is white. So it's predominantly bright, you know. So if you have that scenario, then the harmonious element in your picture is light and in order to break that harmony and bring attention to a place you have to contrast light with dark so if you put a dark element a predominant light environment then the dark element becomes your focal point like this picture of shafi we had this beautiful hairstyle by ugo make me and then the the stylist brought the most beautiful bright yellow outfit so i wanted to create that high key contrast between the hairstyle and the yellow so i, I cropped in a little bit and the whole picture was framed against a very bright yellow background. And then the contrast was the hairstyle that she had on and her eyes, you know, those lashes, those dark lashes against the white of her eye. We look at the picture, you can't help but look at the eyes. So that is how we brought attention to our subject. The opposite of that is the picture that we took at the train station. So if you look at the train station, the train station is an old train station. It's 
dark. The train doesn't have any light, it's not even working. I use that to advantage because while she was wearing this very bright hat, the woman herself is fair in complexion and she had a light blue outfit. So in terms of light and dark, we are now looking at a low-key picture surrounded by this dark brown rust of the, the train. Everything is dark brown except our main subject. I even added a bellboy, somebody helping her with her luggage like in the old day. I insisted that the model has to be a dark model, dark skinned, and he had to wear black. There was a reason for that. So you see him blending more into the background. So there are two human beings, but you're looking more at the one that is brighter. So it's the contrast between the dark and the light that you're using to bring attention to your main subject. The second contrast here is contrast of color. Now, colors do contrast with each other. Colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel are colors that contrast with each other in terms of their property, the chroma color. So the colors opposite each other, they are called complementary colors in the color wheel. Now, when you put these colors side by side in a painting, they tend to push each other out. So if you have a predominance of one color and then you put the one that is opposite it in the color wheel in the picture, you have your ultimate color contrast. Now, in this picture where we have Shafi Bello in the train station, what is happening is the blue that she's wearing is directly opposite orange in the color wheel. The environment is predominantly warm, moving towards orange. The browns, her skin is orange. So, when you put the blue within that picture, the blue starts to pop. So, when you look at this photograph, you'll be wondering why is that blue so vibrant? Every other thing is warm except the blue. But most especially, these two colors are opposite each other on the color wheel. They are complementary colors. When you place complementary colors against each other, you will get this kind of effect. You look at this sort of picture where Shafi Bello is wearing green and then she has this pinkish red kind of hair style. Now, that just summed it up for me. The outfit itself plus her hairstyle and then, I mean, it just made sense for me to go for a background that was maybe green and I saw this hedge that also had flowers that contrasted. So there was harmony of the flowers, there was a contrast of the, the green and it came together with a very strong visual energy that was coming from that push and pull of the two colors. And again, she was traveling and we had this car and I, yes, chose the red car for that, red vintage car for that. And you can see how it plays against the green that she's wearing. These help create visual impact and a lot of aesthetics also in your photograph. The third point here I want to make compositional element is what we call leading line. The eye tends to follow lines in a picture. And one of the easiest ways to play with that is if you have lines moving towards each other in the perspective, if you use perspective. So when you have lines that are adjacent to each other, as they move away, move towards the horizon, they tend to converge. If you look at this picture of her in the train station, you see that all the lines within this picture seemed to be converging in her head, to her head, pointing to her head. It wasn't a coincidence. I moved myself and I maneuvered the model's head to that point so that the lines are pointing. So every time I find myself in a room, especially if it's a small room, I would look at, you know, the converging lines with perspective. So for this other picture, for instance, where she's in a narrow passageway, all the lines are pointed towards her head. I'm also using leading lines to lead the audience to our focal point. It always works as a compositional element. Mind you, all these things I'm talking about are just things you can use or decide not to use. The, the next point I would like us to look at is what I call repetition. Repetition of similar things, especially shape. So if you look at this picture, we are looking at the round circle, the circle of the front of the train and the circle of the heart that she's holding. You know, all these elements tend to create something pleasing to the eye when you repeat things. That also played into how we created this very powerful set of images. When we're talking about, for instance, the contrast between colors, sometimes you may just find these things in nature. Like when I saw she was wearing green and she had red hair, and then I look around for harmony or contrast, and I found the perfect one where the plant was green and she was wearing green, and the plant itself had red flowers. Now, sometimes you may not find this happening in nature, 
but you can engineer it so you see when you look at the train station you may not notice it but i had some light with orange gels pointing at the front of that train now that emphasized the circle of the train so i'm using light to emphasize my design element also far in the background i have a very strong strobe blasting orange light like there is a sunset it wasn't that what you're looking at is my strobe all the warmth and orange that you're seeing in the background that eventually starts to contrast with the blue was actually engineered on location through use of light so i'm saying you can manipulate nature to create the impact that you want but these days i mean i looked at one of the pictures the one i took at the pool they had a morale painting of a waterfall but it didn't look as natural as you know i mean taking a picture at the wide angle lens and the model was already towering over the the fence so i decided to use the generative field tool on photoshop better and just told it to put a waterfall in the background and oh that's what we got Anyway, that would probably be a lesson for another time. Please, if there is any part of these points that you think we should elaborate on, just drop me a note and I'll surely respond. It's been nice. See you next time.